Hi and welcome to this festive instalment of our regular tips and tricks episodes. This week we've decided to try something a little different so we've imagined what a rail clone Christmas tree might look like. I'm not sure I'd trust it in my presence but our tree does illustrate some invaluable tips to help you master randomising values in rail clone. Most of the built-in randomization controls work on a per-segment basis, but sometimes we want to generate a new value for each generator, row, spline section or spline sub-object. In this tutorial, we'll show you how that's done. In the downloadable starter scene, we have a bundle of splines to represent our mechanical tree. These were created using GrowFX, but they've been collapsed to editable splines for this tutorial so that anyone can follow along. The interesting thing though is that RailClone can be used with absolutely any object that is able to output splines. You might for example also try Ivy Generator, Plexus or any other MoGraph script, or try converting the trajectories of animated objects or particles to splines and use those to drive RailClone objects. There's certainly a lot of creative possibilities for RailClone when it's combined with other scripts and I think we've barely scratched the surface. But back to our example, before we add pipes to this tree, I'd recommend creating the style using a much simpler spline so that the updates are easy and it's clearer to see what's going on. So for this purpose, in the scene you'll find a spline object called Test Lines. We'll use this to create the style before swapping it for the more interesting tree splines. And also to save a little time, the scene file already contains a rail clone object containing all the necessary segments, a generator and the spline object. A couple of parameters have also already been added including all the segments Z and Y alignment choices have been set to pivot and the pivot on the source geometry is in the centre of the pipe's bore so that they sit on the spline correctly. The evenly distanced value has been exported and attached to a numeric node so that it can be easily edited from the modify panel. The generator's default segment mode has been set to scale. When this mode is active only one default segment is placed between each evenly segment and that segment is scaled to fill the available space. If you need any help with any of these items or topics, I recommend our Getting Started with Rail Clone guide, which is ideal for helping new users get up and running with the plugin. In this tutorial, we're focused purely on mastering randomization, starting with changing the type of pipe and joint segments. Uh, so in the scene, there are six types of pipe. The first three have different textures, but use the same joints, and the remaining three have their own joint types. So let's select the existing Rail Clone Pipes object and open the style editor, and you can see what happens if we use the randomize operators to connect the pipes to the default input and the joints to the evenly input. As you can see, the randomization takes place per segment, meaning that each section uses different pipe and joint geometry. Though sometimes this might be desirable, in this case we want to use just one type of pipe and one type of joint per spline. So to do this, we need to employ a different technique to randomize the segments that gives us much more control over when a new random number is generated. This technique involves using a selector instead of a randomize operator. Normally, selector nodes are used to select a specific segment using a numerical input as shown here. But, by attaching a random number generator to this value, we can create a randomized function with considerably more control. To set this up, create a new selector node and wire all the pipe segments to the inputs. Then, create a second selector node for the joints, but wire joint 1, 2, 3 to the first three inputs. This is because pipes 1 to 3 use the same joint segment and wire the remaining three joints to input slots 4 to 6. We can now toggle through these using the index, but in order to use a random number generator to select these segments, it's necessary to create an input for the index value. So to do that, right click on the selector node and go to export parameters index. Do the same for both selector operators. Now create a new random node and wire it to both the exported index inputs. Select the random node and go to the properties to set the range. We've got six possible segments so we'll enter a value of one in the minimum field and six in the maximum. All the pipes will now be identical because the random node is generating only a single number. However, the reason we use the random node is because it's actually extremely flexible. It allows you to change this to one of six possible options. There's the existing start, which generates a new random number once for each instance of the rail clone object. Or you can change it to segment, which generates a new random number for each individual segment. Or you can use xSpline start, which generates a new random number for each spline sub-object. Or xSpline section, which generates a new random number for each spline segment. And for the purposes of this calculation, a segment is defined as the section of a spline between two corners or evenly segments. And finally you have array y row, which generates a random number at the start of each new row, uh, although be aware that this only works in conjunction with 2D arrays. 
We want a random number per spline, so we'll change the mode to X spline start. You now have a new pipe type for each spline, and because the two selector operators share the random node, they're kept in sync. And so, with the types of pipes randomised, how about changing the size too? As you may know, segment and transform nodes already have translate, scale and rotate randomization controls built in. But like the random operator, these options generate a new value for each individual segment. Plus, each axis is randomized independently, so it's not ideal when you need to maintain proportions. To solve this, the random parameter can once again be very helpful. And to illustrate it, I'll randomize the size of the pipes proportionally once per spline. To do it, create a new transform operator and wire it between the pipe selector operator and the generator's default input. Right click on the transform node and export fixed transform fixed scale Y and the same for Z. Create a new random parameter and wire it to the newly exported scale Y and Z inputs. The pipe is scaled between evenly segments by the generator so we don't need to worry about the X axis. Select the random node and change the type to percentage and then enter a value of 25% for the minimum and 200% for the maximum to create a large size range. And finally to generate a new size for each spline, change generator on to X spline start. The pipes will now be randomised, but at the moment the joints remain the same size. So to affect the joints as well, duplicate the existing transform node and wire it between the joint selector node and the generator's evenly input. This time we also want to scale the joints on the X axis as well, so export fixed transform fixed scale X and wire this to the same random node. And now we've randomised the type of segments and their size. So moving on, let's look at materials. The twisted pipe has four materials applied using IDs 3 to 6. Pipe 1 also uses ID 3 and we'd like it to be randomised as well so that it takes one of the same four materials. RailClone has a material operator for this purpose that we can add between the selector node and the default input of the generator. But the material operator has a few limitations. It generates a new random value per segment and it can only randomise a single source ID at a time. The first problem is easily solved using another random parameter node. So once we've got our material operator, you can change the replace material ID value to 3. Then right click on the material node and export from and to. Create a new random parameter node and wire it to both these exported inputs. Change the minimum value to 3 and the maximum value to 7 to set the randomization range. And finally change generate on to X spline start and you'll be randomizing material ID 3 between 3 and 7 once for each spline. To tackle the second limitation, to randomise multiple IDs, you can link together material operators in a chain with one for each ID you wish to randomise. In this case, we want to randomise IDs 3 to 6, so we'll need four material nodes in total. Um, so to create these, select the existing material node and its random operator node and copy and paste them three more times. Wire the material nodes together in sequence. When that's done, wire the transform operator to the first input and wire the last material node's output to the default input of the generator. Now, for each material node, change replace material ID value so that the first is 3, the second is 4, the third is 5 and the final node is 6. Finally, change each random parameter's seed value so that they don't all generate the same number. And that's it, this is your final graph. And now that we've got the style set up, we can apply this to our tree. So with the object still selected, go to the Modify panel and select the spline listed in the Base Objects rollout. Click on the Spline Picker button and select Tree Spline from the scene. This will now be used to create the pipes, but they're much too large at the moment, so we need to scale them down. Fortunately, RailClone has a global scale parameter found in the style rollout. Change this to 5% to make the pipes much, much smaller. Now let's change the spacing between the joints. To do this, change the evenly distance in the parameters rollout to match the smaller spline lengths, so a value of 0.1 meters works quite well. And here we have our RailClone metal festive tree, but let's add the rest of the scene. 
Open the scene explorer and unhide the environment, light and camera and forest objects layer and also the rail clone baubles object. The forest object is just using empty billboards as a placeholder at the moment, but to finish up I wanted to show that it's possible to scatter rail clone objects using forest pack. And to do so, you just need to make sure that the rail clone object's instancing engine is disabled. And then with that done, you can select the forest pack object and go to the geometry rollout, change the item to custom object and it's as simple as picking the rail clone tree from the scene. And that's all you need to do. Forest pack is now scattering our rail clone tree and it's ready to render. So although this is an unusual use for the plugin, these techniques are very useful for a huge range of application. Even in this scene there's another example of this approach. Select the rail clone baubles object and you'll find a style that uses a single random parameter to control both the Z position of the balls and the length of the string that's needed to tie them to the tree. You could certainly use a similar idea to this for lights and chandeliers. We're drawing towards the end of the year now and this will be our final tutorial for 2015. So on behalf of everyone at i2 Software, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a heartfelt thanks for watching our tutorials and using our plugins. We wish you a very happy holiday and a fantastic new year. We'll see you in 2016.